Uh, so this one, yeah, another seventh level game. So the guys that did the um, Monty Python games, um, Little Howie, a couple other ones. And this is um, the universe according to Virgil Reality. The amazing and sometimes wacky wonders of science. All right. Oh, we even get a little spiel on the back. That's good. A few amazing things like insects and comet dust at thousands of times their normal size. Take a wild ride back to the age of dinosaurs in Virgil's time machine. Yeah, all right. This seems to be a fair bit of stuff going. Oh, and it's the... Uh, okay, so the guy voicing him is Charles Fleischer, who did um, Roger Rabbit. Yeah, cool. All right, let's, um, let's boot it up and have a look, shall we? It's got some potential. I did like some um, seventh level stuff. Let's get into it. Okay. And yep, audio seems to be good. Yeah, I forgot they did that. Um, there's like an Ace Adventure. Excuse me. Ace Ventura point and click adventure. They did a while back too. Yeah, let's not fuck around. Let's get into it. Sure. That's what we're doing, I guess. Okay. I love laboratories. This is where scientists make their greatest discoveries. And all you have to do is click on something and I'll tell you everything you need to know. Let's have a quick review. If you want to go to a room, you click on Factoid. He will take you. If you need information Who's from Factoid, though? Media, you click on Tube. She will take you. Alligator. Um, what? Oh, oh. Alligator. Radio. Largest cat. Ah. <laughs> the cat's just like, you talking about me? Hourglass. Okay, um. Jurassic period. Whale. Early train. <laughs> Early train whales. Early train. Largest balloon. Airplane. Okay, Dinosaur. um. Electric motor. So who are you meant to be clicking The on? biology song. Oh, there's Everything's a... connected. Frog. Frog. We get some songs a biology though? song. Everything's connected. It could be you. Yeah, let's let's do a song to start off with. That sounds like fun. Or not. <laughs> okay. Ah, what are you doing? I was taking such a beautiful nap. It, it, we're here to be entertained. We're here to be edutained. Uh virtual reality. Everything that I saw in my dream was connected to something else. Ah, hey, that's not a bad idea for a tune. Mm, hit it, fellas. Hey, yeah, give us a song. Okay, oh, he did, did that. That's that's a little creepy. Okay. The song I'm about to sing will teach you about everything. Oh, that's good. And then when everything is detected, oh, then you're going to realize that everything is connected. Huh, okay. If you want to write a letter, you just can't guess. You've got to have the right address. Now, bitch, you know that the universe is where we live. <laughs> oh, it's all getting Frankenstein cat. He's got little bolts in his neck. Okay. Girls, I think I need a little help this time. Oh, we get some singers? Oh, the star singers. Oh, wow. Our solar system is the home of the sun. Life without that would not be any fun. The Earth makes an orbit once a year. Okay. You can look to the stars, or you can look within. At the universe beneath your skin. Organs and cells are the body's jewels. You leave my jewels alone, yeah. man. Made of molecules. <laughs> I'm very protective about my jewels. Oh, 
It certainly is. Why is that frog got glasses though? <laughs> the toll is connected to the sewer system, that's where my poopy goes. <laughs> I'm a puddle now, bye. Well, that certainly was a crazy dream. Yeah, alright, cool. We, we did a song. Yeah, nice, alright. So, uh, are we gonna learn every anything? Since you've been here before, I think you know what to do. No, I, I really don't. Um, what are we meant to do? we get a tour Welcome or anything? To my laboratory. All you have to do is start exploring. Click on anything that interests you, and I'll tell you all about it. Oh, okay. Um, Information from the encyclopedia is always linked to Cube. So, if you click her, you can find out more about any subject. Oh, is that the little alien thing there in the bottom? And he's your friend too. He will take you anywhere you want to go in the title. All you have to do is move the cursor to him and he'll show you the icon oh. that will lead you to any room that exists. That is within this title. Yeah, okay. Um, well, let's learn. Motor. let's learn about electric motors. An electric motor. Oh, we even get a little slideshow thing. Oh, well, that's cool. To mechanical energy. Hmm. So, that means that when you plug in your clock, the electrical energy is converted to the mechanical energy which makes the hands of your clock move around. In an electric motor, electrical energy flows into a wire loop situated in a magnetic field. The interaction of the electrical energy and the magnetic field moves the armature which spins the shaft around. The shaft goes outside the motor and its spinning is mechanical energy. That's right. So the reaction between the electromagnetic field and the armature keeps getting pushed and pushed and pushed, which turns the armature, and then that can be attached to gears or axles to drive wheels or lift water or do anything you want. Yeah, cool. Great. All right. So I guess you just click on stuff and... Submarine. Yeah, we'll have a look at the submarine as well. In 1620. Okay, so there's a full spiel for like everything you can click on here. And then we just change so rooms to find out about other stuff. Yeah, right. And took a crew of 12 men under the water of the Thames River in London. It was the first submarine. Wow. We've come a long way since then. Cube, can you help us with some sub data? Of course, Professor. Here's a video clip. Here she is. Oh, it's an FMB, so. The first submarine powered by nuclear fission. This submarine can stay underwater for months. So if anyone wants to know where the Nautilus is, tell them it's gone fission. The longest submarine in the world belongs to the United States Navy. It's almost the length of two football fields placed end to end. That may be the longest, but that doesn't actually make it the biggest submarine in the world. The biggest submarines belong to the Russian Typhoon class, which are part of the Russian Navy. They're the biggest because not only are they long, they're also very wide. They are hmm. much shorter than subs in the U.S. Navy, but they are very wide and strong enough to travel 4,800 miles while carrying turn this up a little bit. Warheads. The first submarine to be used as an instrument of war was invented in the 1770s. It was called the turtle and was shaped like an egg and could carry only one person. Do you know, during the American Revolution, the colonial navy actually used a hand-driven submarine to attack a British ship? For it was what? an unsuccessful attack. Mm, can imagine. Details, details. Let's move on. Here's a multiple choice question. Oh. Submarines are used by A, this is boys who are afraid of being alone. B. Grandmothers who are afraid of eating cheese on their birthday. Or C. Scientists who do research 
and people in the military. I'm sure it's grandmothers. Let's pick that one. Oh, it doesn't want us to pick that one. Okay. Yeah, great. Oh, and we're back here again. Okay. Um, so what did Q do? Let's have a look at the encyclopedia. Oh, okay. We this get some actual. Cross references all the information yeah. within this title. There are several different ways to find information. If you click the category button, a list will appear of all available categories. You can either use your mouse to scroll through the list or enter a letter to jump to a specific section. If you select a category, all topics related to that category will appear. Simply select the topic and the information will appear in the reference window. Yeah, well, that's that's boring. Search I mean, skip all this. Yeah, all right. We can press spacebar to skip. That's good. Yeah, I just want to see what else is, what other rooms there are. The biology song. And we'll we'll finish on a song because that's usually Largest how cat. you um. Largest cat. I want to find out about the cat though. <laughs> Two the seconds. Largest cat is the tiger. A male tiger can be nine feet long with a three foot tail and can weigh over five hundred pounds. That's the kind of cat you want to have for a friend. The tiger is the largest member of the cat family and is classified with the lion, the leopard, and the jaguar. Here's a fat cat. In 1988, a 10-year-old domestic cat weighed in at over 46 pounds. Holy Eight shit, that's a chunky boy. So he should cut back on the kitty bittle. The kitty Alligator. bittle? What? Okay. Let's, um, help. so I get some help. Encyclopedia. Lab. Theater. Activity center. Ooh. Lab. Let's try the theater. Let's go. Can we... Oh, we, that didn't get selected? Lab. Theater. Activity center. Uh, is, is, is this the lab or is where we meant to be going? There we go. Off to the theater. <clears throat> ah, cool. Like all movies for everything, I guess. Here's how you have fun in my theater. Do you see those three cans marked scientists, inventions, and adventures? <laughs> Good. Click on one. You want to have fun in a theater? Movie. Don't ask Paul no, Rubens. This, whatever you, you do. Select whether you want to learn about a scientist, an inventor, or his invention. This is going to be fun. Yeah. Um. Let's let's do some scientists, I guess. Who we got? Charles Darwin, Einstein. Galileo, Galileo, uh, maybe Loveless. There's a few in here I'm actually not aware of. Um, uh, maybe, Mar yeah, Stop. Oh, Marie Curie or something. Do you have a photo of Madame Curie somewhere in there? The Curies did most of their work in Paris and are best known for their experiments in radioactivity. Together, they lived and loved and paved the way for understanding the future of atomic energy and its enormous power. It was the Curie's experiments with radioactivity that led to their discovery of the elements radium and polonium in 1898. Hmm. Polonium was actually named after Marie's native country of Poland. Previous to his studies with Marie, Pierre discovered <laughs> Man, that yes, above a certain fucking, temperature, pretty, if it wasn't for the ears, he'd be pretty chadly looking. That's a good haircut. It is known as the Curie temperature. In 1903, Marie Curie shared the Nobel Prize in Physics with another physicist for discovering radioactivity. In 1911, she received the second Nobel Prize in Chemistry for isolating pure radium, making her the only woman to receive two Nobel Prizes. Yeah, I, I have a feeling that's still... But I uh, might have changed in 100 years, 120 years, you never know. Ada who's, Lovelace. Yeah, who's Ada Lovelace? Believe and think not. Doubt and perish! What? Those are the words of the great 19th century mathematician Augusta Ada Byron King, Countess of Lovelace, oh. and one heck of a smart lady. Hmm. Ada was the daughter of the famous English poet Lord Byron. Huh. Her okay. mother, Lady Byron, separated from her husband and took all of her children with her, including Ada. She was encouraged to pursue any endeavor that was different from her father's. So Ada pursued her interest in mathematics. Studying on her own, she corresponded with the best mathematicians of her time. In 1830, Charles Babbage was working on his analytical engine. This was considered to be the precursor of the electric computer, even though it was only a mechanical device. 
Mm -hmm. Charles and Ada met at a ball, and Ada was taken with how quickly and accurately Babbage's machine could add numbers. She became the programmer for his engine many years later. Oh, okay. Although the engine was never finished, Ada not only knew how to program it, but she was able to anticipate its future uses with remarkable foresight. She predicted that such a machine would someday be used to generate music and artificial intelligence. We know this from the only paper she ever published, which was entitled The Difference Engine. Many consider her the inventor of computer programming. Huh. Unfortunately, the rest of Ada's life was tainted with gambling debts and an illness that ended her life prematurely at oh. the age of 36. Oh, snap. Today, okay. the name Ada also refers to a high-level computer language commissioned by the United States Department of Defense. Oh, in the late I've 1970s. actually never heard of that programming language. Well, it there you go. in honor of Augusta Ada Byron King, Countess of Lovelace. Thank you for your greatness and your wonderful contribution yeah, cool. to the world of computers. I always seem to learn things whenever I find these, like, edutainment-style programs. Um, any other... Let's try Inventors, see what else we got. Um, yeah, Charles Babbage, Alexander Graham Bell. Um, I want to pick one that we... Theodore Maiman. Yeah. Theodore Maiman. Let's try that. The American physicist Theodore Maiman was the first to discover and demonstrate a laser. Oh, okay. Laser stands for light amplification by the stimulated emission of radiation. The first glimpse of successful optical radiation was obtained with Maiman's experimental ruby laser in 1960. He took a ruby and silvered off one side of it. The light would then bounce back and forth inside the ruby until it became so intense, boom, it broke through, amplified, and so intense that it could cut through material. Today, lasers are used for CD-ROMs, so you couldn't be seeing me without <laughs> Good plug for um, the, the old Monty Python games. Yeah, nice. George yeah, that's cool. Eastman. Um, I actually want to look up, uh, who's the other one I saw on here? Ah, uh, Jules, Jules, I don't Verne. know what Jules Verne invented. Let's, let's find out. Science fiction writer Jules Verne is honored as one of the greatest thinkers of the 19th century. A remarkable series of drawings demonstrate that he wrote about inventions that didn't yet exist. The ocean liner, the helicopter, the submarine, and rockets. However, not even the great thinker Verne could imagine the garden weasel. <laughs> the garden weasel? What? Yeah, right, eh? Um, what do we got for inventions? Alarm clock, the Alamo bed. Yeah, I gotta see the what this entails. Possibly one of the most unpleasant devices ever invented was the alarm o bed. <laughs> At the set time, the bed flipped on its side and threw its startled occupant <laughs> to the floor. Boy, talk about the wake up call. Yeah, hell yeah. Chewing gum, hair cutter. Why, why is an alcohol, alcohol free car? Alcohol. Okay. This might be more effective than sending people to jail. Oh, this is the one Drug where you blow in the breath oh before it um lets you drive the, the car. This car senses when its driver has drunk too much and releases clouds of smoke to force him out of the car. Oh really? Wait. Now the driver needs to quit drinking and the car needs to quit smoking. Oh, oh, that's terrible. <laughs> Um, yeah, show Home me some, invention. show me some wacky stuff. And That's here's what was on some people's mind in 1935. What'll they think of next? <laughs> here's a combination revolver and movie camera. Stop or I'll shoot film. <laughs> and how about this? To discourage false alarms, the Cleveland, Ohio Fire Department tried this. A fire alarm with an alarming feature. It attaches itself to the user's hand. Sorry, kiddo. And ahoy there, here's a giant revolving blade its inventor claims would make the sale obsolete. He was wrong and set sail for bankruptcy court. <laughs> oh, okay, that's that's pretty cool. Encyclopedia. Um, so we did the Activity. theater. Yeah, show us some activities. <laughs> Got to do some, like, interactive stuff for this one. Oh, we have a Welcome weed bag, apparently. Activity Center Laboratory. This is where you get to play in the professor's lab. It's filled with wonderful experiments that utilize objects you have in your house, like pieces of paper and paper clips. 
All you have to do is click on the object and follow the announcer's instructions. You can also print out each experiment by selecting Factoid's print button. Have fun. Yeah, cool. All right. So what can we, what can we do? Toucan experiment. Yeah, let's experiment Excellent. on toucans. So. The toucan experiment. This one really comes together. You'll see what I mean. You'll need a hairdryer, 10 straws, and two empty soft drink cans. Place the straws on a flat surface so they are about have, one half inch. Oh no, I don't have straws, so I definitely drinks, don't have a hairdryer. Drag the straws to the center screen. Oh, oh, we're actually getting some interactivity. No, that's Place cool. Place the two cans okay. on top of the straws so they are about four inches apart. Um, where were the cans? Cans are up here. Okay, one can. Hold the hairdryer about four inches away from the cans and aim the dryer so that its airstream passes between them. Yeah. Okay. Turn the hairdryer on. Be certain it's set on the high setting. Yeah. Oh, that's what's meant this to happen. This is an illustration of Bernoulli's principle. Bernoulli's principle says that fast-moving air has lower pressure than slow-moving air. The fast-moving air stream between the two cans has less pressure than the surrounding slow-moving air. Thus, the higher pressure of the surrounding air pushes the cans together. Bernoulli's principle is important for understanding how airplanes stay aloft. To try another experiment, yeah, yeah, because the um, close button. air going under the wings at a lower pressure, which gives it the lift, or is it above it? I, I oh God, can't remember. <laughs> I don't do anything. I, I cannot do anything with the lemon or spoon. Okay. Um, Diode radio. Yeah. What other plant power? Yeah, dude. Let's do some plant power. I guess. Plant power. Very good. I believe you'll get a rise out of this one. <laughs> You're going to need a long-stemmed white flower, four cups, four different colors of food dye, scissors, and water. Huh. Fill each cup one halfway with water. Okay. To do this, drag the pitcher of water to the cups. Yep. Oh, it does all the cups for me. Cool. Put ten drops of food dye into each cup. Use a different color for each cup. Okay. Oh. Bring the flower next to the cups. Yeah? Take the scissors and cut the flower halfway up its stem. This will give you a total of four mini stems protruding from the main stem. Oh, okay. Place the four stems oh, of the flower okay. so that one stem is in each cup. Yeah? In about 20 minutes, you'll see something very interesting. Plants uh, receive water right. a process known as capillary action. Water rises from the ground and up through the plant stem for nourishment. Placing food dye in the water marks the progress of the water through the plant. Uh, now that's cool. To try another experiment. Click on Factoid's close button. Yeah, all right. Let's try another one. Light bulb. Light bulb. Electromagnet. Electromagnet. Diode radio. Yeah, let's uh, see what uh, that involves. Radio. That sounds like a winner to me. Mm -hmm. You're going to need magnet wire, bell wire, a wooden dowel, a bent piece of metal, a block of wood, a mica capacitor, a germanium oh, yeah, yeah, like a <laughs> and L brackets. Wrap the magnet wire okay. around a dowel so that the loops are touching each other. Be sure to leave two ends exposed at the opposite ends of the dowel. To do this, drag the magnet wire to the wooden dowel in the center screen. Okay, um, what's the other wire? Oh, that's bell wire. Okay. Attach the wooden dowel to the wooden block. Yep. Now you need to use the L brackets to attach the wooden dowel to the block. Okay, L brackets. Anchor the L brackets to the block with tacks. Oh, we're not going to use nails or screws. We're just going to use tacks. tacks okay. to each wire lead off the dowel. Be sure to pound the tacks only halfway into the block of wood. Okay, um, do I have a hammer? Blue, metal T, magnet, candle. Do I just click on the tacks? Um, no, hang on. Touch the tax, pan the tax only halfway under the block of wood. What are we panning with? There's no hammer here. What am I, how am I panning it? Um, maybe, no. Tape, paper roll. <laughs> Just break it with a jar, sure. Um, tax, metal strip. No, doesn't want me to use nails, light sockets, light bulbs. Oh, paper clips, though. No. Oh, I can actually drag everything, but, um, yeah, righto. 
Dow. Can we just skip a step? Anchor the L brackets to the Oh, we can go back the on tags. the steps. No, hang Attach on. Attach the tags to each wire lead off the dowel. Be sure to pound the tacks only halfway into the block of wood. Place the capacitor. Oh, we had to put the, the tacks on the, the wires. Wire okay. Leads. Yeah. All right. Um, where's the capacitor? It's, there's a capacitor. Place okay. Place the bent metal strip perpendicular to the center of the wooden dowel. Then attach the other end of the capacitor to the bent piece of metal. Okay. So they want the bent metal Loosely, strip. Tack the bent piece of metal to the wooden block. Okay, tack. Place the diode on the right side of the capacitor. Um, yeah, Pound a diode. Tack halfway into the wooden block Let's next to the diode. Let's tack with this one. Okay. Connect a short piece of wire to the tack at the end of the bent piece of metal. Um, do we have another short piece of wire? Where do we... No, more tacks. Put the wire on? No. Pound attack oh, halfway just into more the wooden wire. block next to this short piece of wire. Okay. Attach another short piece of wire to the tack on the end of the short piece of metal. Then connect the other end of the wire to the magnet wire lead coming from the left side of the wooden dowel. Um, okay. Yeah, this one's actually really complicated, Attach isn't it? Attach some bell wire to the left magnet wire tack coming off the dowel rod. Then connect the other end of wire to a piece of metal. This will be your ground wire. Okay, so we're going to ground Run it. Run 50 feet of stripped bell wire from the outside tack, which is holding the capacitor. This will be your antenna to pick up AM signals. Oh, and that's why you strip the wire. Okay. Um, Place the headphones ah. next to the end tacks. Attach right. one lead from the headphones to the end of the diode tack. The other lead should be attached to the end of the bent metal tack. Fuck it. All right. Now, this one's complicated, Pound isn't it? each tack into the block of wood. Yeah, to all do right. This, click on each tack. Oh, we gotta click on the tacks now. Now you're ready to tune your AM radio. Try moving the tuner, which is the bent piece of metal. You should be able to hear radio stations. Wow, really? This is all you need? Doesn't this have to be powered somehow? Huh. The antenna of the radio picks up AM signals. The ground wire provides the radio with its power from weak electrical currents in the ground. The oh, bent piece of okay. metal acts as the tuner to pick up the radio signals along the AM band. The capacitor is used to help filter out unwanted random electrical signals. The diode acts as an amplifier and a switch to allow these signals to flow in one direction through the headphones where they can be audibly detected. Oh shit, okay. If you want to learn more about the radio, Check out Marconi in the theater. He is the father of radio. And Macaroni is the father of pasta and cheese. Yes, to try another certainly experiment, is. Click yeah, on don't get Marconi and Macaroni button. mixed up. That's what they're trying to say there. Um, yeah, I, can we do one more experiment? Simple motor. Uh, Invisible ink. Yeah, got to remember. Cleaning pennies. Ah. Magic mirrors. Okay. Dancing raisins. Um, atomizer. The hell does the atomizer involve? Atomizer experiment. Just don't use grape juice in front of the white curtains. You'll yeah, need a drinking good, glass, good water, scissors, and a long straw. Cut the straw almost in half. Okay. To do this, drag the scissors to the straw in the center screen. Yep. All right. The scissors. Bring the short glass to the straw. Um, short glass. Now, fill the glass with water. Water. Yep. Place the straw in the glass. Okay. Bend the straw 90 degrees. Bend straw? Let's get Bits to demonstrate what you have to do next. Bits, could you come over here? I need your assistance. Oh! This is an illustration of Bernoulli's principle. Bernoulli's principle says that fast-moving air has lower pressure than slow-moving air. Ah, uh, yeah. Blowing air quickly across the top of the straw in the water creates low pressure. This low pressure area must be filled by something, and that something is the water in the glass. To try another experiment, does that have like spray cans work? Kind of. Okay. Wow. All right. I think that's it for the lab. God, there was some fun center. stuff in there, though. Lab. Um, Help. No, go lab. back to the lab, I guess. Is there any more? Can we do what they said on the back of the box and go back in time, check out some dinosaurs? 
Let's, uh, let's see if we can do that. Since you've been here before, I think you know what to do. Yeah, okay. Um, Jurassic period. Jurassic period. Yeah, cool. All right. Gonna jump in the time machine, I guess. The Jurassic period began about 208 million years ago and ended about 144 million years ago. The most noticeable thing about this time period was that the dinosaurs started to get very big and the first bird-like creatures began to appear. Also, the supercontinent Pangaea continued to break apart and began forming the continents which we're familiar with today. Hmm. Move your cursor around the landscape and click on what interests you. Oh, cool. We actually get... Oh, my dear lord. That's... Okay. Ornitholestes were only about seven feet in length. Relatively small, but fast and agile, it's believed that these animals may have robbed eggs from their larger relatives. Yeah, great. Oh, and we just... Re oh, my God. We're just revealing dinosaurs. My God. That's a lot of dinosaurs. Bellinites showed no traces of an external skeleton or shell. Like their relatives, the squid, the Baleem Knights expelled ink-like clouds to confuse their enemies. Ah, okay. Plesiosaurs were long-necked sea a reptiles that Charlie. literally flew through Magical the water in search of prey. Mythical creatures such as the Loch Ness Monster may be based on the remains of plesiosaurs. Huh, okay, there you go. Hey, look at this chunk. Apatosaurus were large reptiles related to the Saurischians that must have fed continuously to supply their massive bodies with food. Yeah, not bloody wrong. Jesus. Oh, also a bird. Archaeopteryx oh, were yeah, first known the Archaeopteryx. Birds. They were feathered and had hollowed bones like modern birds, but their skeletal features, including teeth, bah. were reptilian. Okay. Creepy boy. What else did we have? Oh, yes, Stegosaurus. Two-ton vegetarian reptiles were one of ah. the only dinosaurs with bony backplates. They probably had few, if any, predators. Yeah, you don't you don't want to fuck with them. Amblotherium were small primitive mammals. They had a large number of teeth designed to devour a variety of insects. Okay. Comsognathus ah, were one of the compies. smallest known carnivorous dinosaurs. They were about 60 centimeters long and weighed only about six and a half pounds. Mmm. Little baby things. Brachiosaurus were about 75 feet long and weighed <laughs> only 80 <laughs> tons. They may have stood on their hind legs to feed on the highest tree leaves. Yeah, all right. Um, is that all we could, like, search for? Did we get a reward for finding everything? Just kind of... I'd love them. I'm gonna play these sounds. Um, oh, oh, we can go. Oh, yeah, there's some crab. Agukas were one and one quarter inch hermit crabs with well developed pinchers Ow. designed to scavenge the bottom of shallow seas. Don't, you don't get to scavenge my bottom. Oysters are bivalve mollusks which can be found in great numbers within sedimentary deposits. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I guess that's all we can really. Reveal? Um, yeah, let's do the Cretaceous, Cretaceous period. period. Let's have a look over there. Let's see some, uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex. The Cretaceous period began 144 million years ago and ended 66 million years ago. The continents continued to drift apart and became more recognizable as the continents that we live on today. At the end of the Cretaceous period, I am sad to say, a mass extinction took place. This marked the end of the Mesozoic era. Some of the biggest dinosaurs came and went during this period. Yeah, cool. All right. To uh, reveal some more dinos, then. Move your cursor around the landscape and click on what interests you. Yep. Or we're going to T-Rex. Tyrannosaurus rex were the most ferocious ah. predators in existence. Nah, 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 nah. T. rex was over 40 feet in length with six inch long razor sharp teeth. They dominated the earth for as long as 20 million years. All right. He's loving that shit, though. Velociraptors were somewhat small, vicious predators. It's believed they hunted in packs and disemboweled their victims with their knife-like nails. 
Mm-hmm. Ooh. That's so snakes snake. first appeared during the Cretaceous period. They, like dinosaurs, lay soft eggs on land. Oh! Freaky little thing. Chronosaurus were large pliosaurs measuring nearly 30 feet in length. Their ah, heads were twice that of a the big Rex, pictures, though. bearing twice as many teeth. Ah, cool. Sea turtles, since their origin in the Triassic period, are the most heavily armored animals to ever live. Yeah, cool. Oh. Torosaurus were ceratopsian dinosaurs, although not as common as their better known cousin, Triceratops. Yeah, right on. Iguanodons were plant-eating animals with a unique bite. Instead of teeth, they had a horny covering in the front of their mouths, ideally suited for cropping leaves and small branches. Cool. Sauropelta were 17-foot-long vegetarian reptiles with protective spikes and a deadly tail. Yeah, right on. Some birds or anything? There we go. Pterodactylus, with their 12-inch long wingspan, were small toothed reptiles that caught their insect prey in flight. Very cool. All right. Um, Encyclopedia. Um, lab. We might go back to the lab. See if there's anything else exciting to check out in the lab. It just seems to be all like inventions Since and stuff. Since you've been here before, I think you know what to do. How are we doing on Early time? Train. Wheel. Compound microscope. Compound microscope. Oh, are we going compound elsewhere microscope. for compound microscope? Yeah. Yeah, this could be interesting. You have entered the world of the microscope. Would you like to help me build the microscope? Yeah, sure. Pick whichever you like. Oh, hell yeah. No, that sounds like fun. If you want to see something that's very small, you have to have a special device. This device is called a microscope, and it allows us to see things that we could never see without it, like cells in our blood or little microscopic animals that live in your eyelashes. The creation oh, of the first oh my microscope penis. is shrouded in mystery. Many historians believe that Galileo, or the Dutch spectacle manufacturer, Galileo, Hans Galileo, Scaramouche, Scaramouche, where you do the fun dango. The, the microscope is based on the principle of a magnifying lens. Oh, get on with it. I want to build this microscope. This go way back this to fucking blah, 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 blah. Give me, give me, give me on the microscope. Of water made things underneath it look bigger. The compound microscope was the first type of microscope created, and it can be found in most schools and homes. Mm -hmm. The compound microscope can enlarge... I vaguely remember our microscopes being shit. Yeah, because you legitimately yeah, had, like, the mirror down microscope. the bottom. You had to, like, put a light through it or get the light but just the right to be able to see, like, up underneath the slide. Yeah, we didn't have those newfangled electric ones when I was a kid. The microscope of today is very similar to the one that was designed over 400 years I remember years like mid-2000s they did fun stuff with the toys. It's like, yeah, you could get a microscope and I think you could like hook it up to your TV or something. Vaguely remember something like that. To assemble the microscope, place the cursor on top of the blinking object and yeah, that's easy down enough. on the left button. So go get a telescope. I, I really need to find somewhere that's a good spot for a telescope. Oh, I'd have to like drive, you know, an hour or so out of Melbourne. Just don't really have an interest to get up like in the middle of the night to go do that either. There's some cool stuff you can see though, like just with the naked eye. Um, what was the other good one? Um, yeah, I always see, like, around about winter, you see, like, the big planets, like Mars and Jupiter and stuff like that. Um, so, eyepiece? Oh, you're just gonna flash at me. Okay. We need a revolving nose piece. They call it a nose piece because it goes on the front of the microscope where the nose was be. Yeah. Objective lens. Nose piece. Ah. There we go. Next, we need our objective lenses. We'll take three of them so we can have three different powers of magnification and they will be placed on the bottom of the revolving nose piece okay yeah, it's objective cool it's giving lens. you a little spiel on how to actually assemble machinery objective lens objective lens and the, yeah a surprising amount of interactivity for um 
powers of magnification. Especially for seventh one, level games. Let's see things a hundred times bigger. The second one lets us see things four hundred times bigger. <laughs> and like, if we turn it one more wow. time, we can see things one thousand times bigger. That's not a thousand Why, times a bigger. Magnification. When you look down through the ocular eyepiece, the image that you will see will be upside down and backwards. This is called inversion. If you've ever looked into the concave reflection of a dinner spoon, you can see that your face is upside down. This is what the first or objective lens does. It turns the image upside down. The ocular lens flip-flops it so that it is backwards. And that is why when you move your little slide under the microscope, you have to remember that every movement is backwards and upside down. It's confusing, but you get used to it. Okay. Okay, Front. now we need to find the stage. Do you see where it is? Okay, drag it over here. This is where we will put our slides. Oh, so it'll be... Stage clips. Yeah. Stage. Now, stage? we have to install the stage clips. These are the clips that will hold our slide specimen flat on the stage so that it doesn't move. If it moved just a little bit, it would throw off everything. Mm -hmm. Drag it over here. Okay. Stage clips. Just okay. below the stage, there's a round wheel with little holes in it of all different sizes. This is the iris, like the iris in your eye. It opens and closes to allow different amounts of light to pass through the opening. You see, it's very brilliant. It's time now to drag the mirror over to the bottom of the stage. This will allow light to be reflected up to the iris diaphragm, to the center hole, to the specimen, and eventually into your eye. Mm -hmm. Mirror. Cool. And now everything is held together, right? Now I want you to drag over what we call the course adjustment knob and the fine adjustment knob. There's only one knob here. Knobs. Now that you've built <laughs> Allow me to adjust my knob. Let's see if it works. I'll just zip up here to the eyepiece or the ocular. Oh, cool. This is one big ocular, huh, Bits? Maybe I shrunk. Or do you think the microscope grew? Either way, it's all relative. Do you want to you ah. get your balls off it on me, Bits? Put my eye in there. I don't have anything to look at. Bits, do me a favor and go down to the stage and be my subject. Oh, well. It's like a full-blown cutscene for it. That's cool. You have to get under the objective lens if I'm going to see you. Do you see? Good. Hello there, yeah. I can see that your stitches yeah, yeah, yeah. have healed yeah, yeah, yeah. very nicely. I think it's my best work, don't you? Is that a flea in your fur or a crumb of kibble? Either way, I think it's disgusting. Anyways, let's see what you look like under different powers of magnification. Yeah, right. Oh, and now we get control over it. You have three objectives that you can choose from. 10, 40, or 100. So click on the one that you want. And then you can pick a slide from the slide tray and put that underneath and have a look. Yeah, cool. Magnified a hundred times, this looks pretty good. Magnified four hundred times, it looks even better. <laughs> exactly. Magnified exactly. a thousand times, I'm getting scared. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Thank you, Bits. Nice. Oh, that's the cool. microscopic objects and organisms are located in the slide box over there. All you have to do is click on one of the slide door icons that you like. You can pick either plants, animals, fiber, bacteria, protozoans, or everyday objects. Use the up and down arrows to view your choices and click the X to select the slide. It's easy, isn't it? Yeah, all right. You can view the slide under 100 magnification, 400 magnification, or 1000 magnification just by clicking on the objective lens. When you're finished viewing the slide, just choose another one the same way. You don't have to put it back. Now, if you're doing this in real life, you always put your slides back. Click on the electron. You can't get to tell me what to do, you know, my dad. Electroid is holding if you want to view objects more than a thousand times magnification. Yeah, beautiful. All right, so we'll common. take common oh yeah, newsprint, finger, sponge, $20 bill, dime. Let's do a paper clip. Paper clip. And we do get to pick our magnification. Yeah. That's that's really a thousand times. 
Don't really get much detail out of it though. Um, maybe a penny? Penny. Yep. 400. Yeah, we're not really Fine. zooming into these much, are we? Oops. Cotton fiber. Oh yeah, yep. Now that makes a bit more sense. I get some linen. Linen fiber. Yeah? Oh, linen's a bit different. Yeah, because it's a type of um, grass fiber, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, nylon's like a synthetic nylon one. Yeah, you don't really get the best Protozoa. pictures, do you? Um, Daphnia. That's certainly a protozoa. Okay. Trypsinoma. Yeah, no. Different. Animal. Um... Ascaris. Ah, right -o. Plank. Yeah, so you can just... There's certainly plenty of things to, um... Scroll through on the like. Alright, now we might, um... Electron microscope. Ooh, now that sounds more like my style. Let's check that out. Now that you have a microscope, you'll need something to look at. Well, don't worry. I've prepared lots of slides for you. Here's what you do. You can either look at plants, animals, viruses, bacteria, protozoans, or everyday objects. You use the up and down arrows to scroll to the... Yeah, alright, now we, we understand the concept. Virus. Oh, the... Simian varicella? Is this monkeypox? Simian varicella virus. That's... Adenovirus. And we're... Oh, here's some herpes. Various forms of herpes simplex virus. That's, that's a lot of herpes. Okay. Various forms of ORF virus. Retrovirus. Protozoa. Bacteria. Um. Citrobacteri freundii bacteria. Oh, yeah. No, hang on. We're going... There's only one bacteria we can look at? Yeah, that seems slack. Ant. Let's look at an ant. Ant. That's certainly an ant. All right, no, that's fine. Compound microscope. Uh, all right, so we'll go back to the lab. I think we might leave it there because we've been at nearly an hour, but there is some good stuff in here. Um, do We'll finish on a song. We'll do one more song and then I'll probably, um, we'll finish the stream for the afternoon. I think you know what to do. Yeah, I, I do. The biology song. Everything's connected. It could be you. All right, might finish with the biology song. <sighs> See what this one entails. Just him flopping his dick out for the entire song. Yes, crystals grow, but that does not make them alive. Living things have special orders for them. It's the study of biology. If something's alive, then we can see that it's a part of biology. It could be a fish, a frog, or a mule. It could be a teacher at your school. So how do we know if something's alive? I'll tell you, there are seven things it needs to survive. If something's alive and it sells the vibe because of the actions of the nucleotide, it's not a rock, a stone, or a key. That would be geology. So how do we know if something's alive? There are seven things it needs to survive. It's got to grow. It's got to move and stay loose. Oh, good. Glad that you did something else for the reproducing one. Everybody there, there. <laughs> 
Oh, get down. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Just end on a Photoshop. That's fair enough. All right. No, that's 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 definitely one way to end it. But uh, no, that was that was pretty cool. I got to admit, like, wasn't a, I didn't think there'd be that much interactivity to it. Before, I think you know what to do. Let's see if we can get some end credits. I wouldn't mind figuring out um, exit. Who else is, uh, does voice acting in this? We get some credits. Let's find out. Yeah, here we go. Uh, yeah, Charles Fleischer, Barbara House, and someone else. The world with me. If that oh, no discovery. yeah, right. Eh? No electricity, no radio, no TV. It's true. <laughs> Certainly, yeah. You need a shit ton of animators for this stuff. So let's thank all the girls and guys who helped to open up our eyes. It's true. It could be you. It could be you. Our thanks to Daniel Bernoulli, to Madame Pierre Curie, to Leonardo da Vinci, and Julio Marconi. It's true. <laughs> it could be you. <laughs> to see something before it's there. Get the gun, they went on loud on the bloody um, music, didn't they? And so, yeah, it depends on the amount of um, people involved this. If it's knowledge that you can't resist, then you might be a scientist to make yourself a little list and form your own hypothesis. It's true! <laughs> you know, you know, it's true! And then the next thing that we see. Yeah, look at all the quality assurance guys. It's, it's a lot of QA people. Oh, they actually credited all the um, archive footage they used. That's nice of them. Yes. <laughs> Thanks to all the Fleischers. That's what Charles Fleischer said. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah, nice. All right. I'm watching Death Sandals video, by the way. That's that's who the the person is. So if you want to watch a full playthrough, Death Death Sandals.